As you've seen in several videos, function transformations can be really challenging for students. It's the kind of thing that you just need a lot of practice with. So I thought it would make sense, even though I've taught you everything that you need to know about this section in the previous videos, to make one additional video where I just run through a bunch of examples, kind of go through them quickly, don't try to teach you anything new, but just give you practice with stuff that you already know. For this first problem, it would be nice if you could recognize that there's two different transformations going on here. A vertical transformation, so you're kind of thinking subtract three from the y's, and a horizontal transformation where you're thinking subtract one from the x's. And no, that's not a typo. I do want to subtract one even though I see a plus one here. The short reason why is because all the horizontal transformations are kind of the opposite of what you'd think. I have two transformations, so it'd be good if you thought about the order that you apply these transformations because sometimes that's super important. However, in this specific example, it's not important at all because I only have to worry about order if I have more than one of a given type. If I have two horizontal transformations, order is important. If I have two vertical transformations, order is important. But in this case, I just have one of each type, so the order that I apply them doesn't matter at all. In fact, they're simple enough that I could probably apply them both in a single step and get my final answer. I want to take each of these different points and I want to subtract one from their x-coordinate and subtract three from their y-coordinate. So this point right here, its x-coordinate will go from two to one and its y-coordinate will go from four down to positive one. This point right here has an x-coordinate of one, so that's going to move to zero, and a y-coordinate of one, that's going to move to negative two. This point has an x-coordinate of zero and a y-coordinate of zero, so when I subtract one from the x-coordinate and subtract three from the y-coordinate, I end up down here at negative one, negative three. This point starts out with an x-coordinate of negative one, so it's gonna end up with an x-coordinate of negative two, and it starts out with a y-coordinate of one, so it's gonna end up with a y-coordinate of negative two. And finally, this point that starts out with an x-coordinate of negative two, it's gonna end up with an x-coordinate of negative three, and since it starts out with a y-coordinate of four, it's gonna end up with a y-coordinate of one. Really all I'm doing is I'm shifting the graph left one unit and down three units, although I'd encourage you to, instead of thinking about it as shifting, think about it as adding and subtracting to and from the x and y coordinates. Anyways, the dots represent my final graph. If I connect them with roughly the shape that I started out with in green, I'll be done with this problem. In this next question, I wanna introduce some alternative notation. So in this question, the function that I'm starting out with, q of x, is one over x. But suppose that wasn't given to you. Suppose you didn't know what graph was pictured. This thing was just called q of x. If this thing was just called q of x and you didn't know his equation, I could ask you to sketch q of two x plus one, and maybe you'd be able to recognize that I'm taking the x coordinate and multiplying that by two, so that's a horizontal transformation. And then I'm taking the output, the q of x from this function, and I'm adding one to that, so it's a vertical transformation. Because I do know the equation of this function, I can more explicitly tell you what the transformation is. It's y equals one over two x plus one. But the point of this problem where I'm giving alternative notation is, the function doesn't have to be given explicitly like this, it can be defined implicitly as you see up here, and we can still do the function transformation. So it'd be nice if you could look at this and recognize the different transformations, just like you can look at this and recognize the, the two different transformations. Now that we recognize them, let's figure out what happens. Let's see, this plus one vertical transformation just means add one to the y values. And as we've seen in previous videos, when I multiply the x value by two, I have a horizontal transformation where everything is backwards. You might think multiply all the x values by two, but don't, you actually wanna divide the x values by two. This graph is a little bit harder to find integer values for. I know it goes through one, one, and negative one, negative one, but those two points make it hard to figure out what the final graph looks like. So I might take advantage of the fact that it also goes through two, one half, because when I put two into this machine, one half comes out, and it goes through negative two, negative one half. And maybe with these four points, that'll be enough for me to figure out where everything ends up. Let's give it a shot. We have this point here that has an x coordinate of two but my transformations tell me I wanna divide all the x coordinates by two. So two divided by two is one, which is gonna be its new x coordinate. Its y coordinate started out as one half, but I wanna add one to that. One plus one half is three halves or one and a half. So this point is gonna end up up here. What about this point here? Well, it starts out with an x coordinate of one. When I take that and divide it by two, it ends up at one half. And it starts out with a y coordinate of one. When I take that and add one to it, it gets up here to two. Maybe I can do the same thing for these two points. This x coordinate is negative two. If I divide negative two by two, it ends up at negative one. This y coordinate is negative one half. 
If I add one to that, it ends up up here at positive one half. This x coordinate is negative one. Negative one divided by two is negative one half. This y coordinate is negative one. Negative one plus one is zero. So it ends up right here. From these four dots, it's kind of hard to connect the dots in the same shape that you see in blue and purple here. So here's a little trick that you can do. The original graph gets really close to the x-axis and to the y-axis. So I can kind of think about where these transformations are gonna move those axes. So my y-axis here are all the points that has an x-coordinate of zero. If I take zero and divide it by two, it's still gonna be zero. And then if I add one, kind of move it up one unit, it's still gonna be this line right in the middle of my graph. What I'm saying is my graph in pink is still gonna be kind of centered on the y-axis here. But for the x-axis, all the points where the y-coordinate equals zero, when I add one to all the y-coordinates, it's gonna move up and kind of end up up here at positive one. So just like my graph in purple kind of hugged the x and y axes, my graph in pink is gonna hug these green dotted lines. Maybe with that information, it's a little bit easier to sketch the final graph and come up with an answer that looks more or less like this. This would be q of 2x plus one. To test if that made sense, let's do one final example. g of x is the function given to us. In this case, it's x cubed, but we'll be able to answer this question without ever knowing that g of x equals x cubed. All we have to do is recognize that this negative two and this positive one each represent vertical transformations, but this negative three right here represents a horizontal transformation. On the vertical side of things, because we have two vertical transformations, the order is really important. We have to do this one first. So first multiply the y's by two, then add one to all the y's. But since we only have one horizontal transformation, the order that we do it in doesn't matter at all. All we have to do is recognize that this minus three means counterintuitively add three to all the different x values. You can do orange before red or red before orange. It makes no difference at all. Maybe I'll do the reds first. By extending my graph a little bit, I have four points and I'll just track where these four points end up and then connect the dots with something that has roughly the same shape as I see in blue. So first adding three to all the different x coordinates. This point has an x coordinate of two. Two plus three is five. So this point would end up somewhere out here, a little bit off my graph, but fine. This point has an x-coordinate of one, one plus three is four. This point has an x-coordinate of zero, zero plus three is three. This x-coordinate of negative one, once I add three to it, moves over here to two. And if we wanna see kind of an intermediate step, we can connect these dots with something that has roughly the same shape as is pictured in blue. However, we're not done. We still have to apply the vertical transformations. So I wanna multiply all the y values by two and then add one to that product. So this point has a y coordinate of negative one. If I multiply negative one by two, it becomes negative two. And then if I add one to it, negative two plus one more will bring me back up here to this point. This point has a y coordinate of zero. Zero times two is zero. Zero plus one ends up up here at one. This point has a y coordinate of one. One times two is two. Two plus one gets me up here to three. And then this point, if I wanted to try to track it, let's see, it currently has a y coordinate of eight. Eight times two is 16 plus one more is 17. That's gonna be so far off my graph, I'm not even gonna worry about it. This point that started out at the origin kind of traveled over here to three zero and ended up up here at three one. At this point, my graph gets kind of flat. So the thing that I wanna draw in orange should be kind of flat there and increasing as I go in this direction. Same thing as I draw it going on to the left, it should look more or less like this. It's not an art class, it doesn't have to be perfect, especially if you've written off to the side what your steps are and you've tracked a couple of different points like we did in orange. One last comment, these transformations were defined implicitly because it doesn't use x cubed up here. It just says there's this function g of x that's pictured in blue and these are the transformations we wanna do. This same question could be asked slightly differently. If you can tie together this implicit notation with y equals negative two times x minus three to the third power plus one, that third power coming from this third power here, that shows a really good understanding of defining functions implicitly and explicitly. But it'd be nice if whether the question was asked this way or this way, you could see the vertical and horizontal transformations and then take points and move them accordingly to come up with our final graph.